Hello and welcome to this video where we're looking at using voltage modular as a VST instrument from inside Cubase. So hopefully you're aware you can use voltage modular as a plain instrument from inside Cubase. So it's launched in the normal way. In this case, adding an instrument track, picking voltage modular from the list here. So it appears under synth as it's a VST3 plugin. So it's kind of categorized already and clicking add track loads it up and here we have a bare voltage modular so from here you can load up any of the presets and this includes presets you've made in standalone mode so your user presets etc so i'm just going to load up 80s wonder there and straight away if i play on my keyboard we can see that works so pretty straightforward on the face of it so if that's all you're interested in doing then that's all you need to know you've probably worked that out already but there's a few other things we're going to look at which will make life a bit more useful for you so first things first i'm going to load up a preset which has got some features in it which are going to be useful for what we're doing so this is a fairly simple synth kind of thing we saw in the very first video so it's just got two oscillators fed through a mixer so one of them's a sawtooth one of them is a square wave fed through a mixer then they're going through a common filter and amplifier nothing particularly uh, revolutionary about that but we're going to use this as a tool to look at a few things that you can do with voltage modular so first thing you're probably going to want to do is to use automation now to do that you need to assign any of the controls that you want to use to automation channels that are then available to Cubase so let's say we want to automate cut off so this is going to be very similar to doing it in the effect as in the previous video so we're going to assign cut off in this case to number one we get an internal name for it here so we can see that it's assigned to cut off frequency so if you were to right click again and go to automation assign you can see now it says filter cut off frequency and if we want to automate that we can just go to the track here get our automation track up and then pick it from the menu so under more we see voltage modular and then number one and that will now automate the cutoff frequency so i won't play any notes but i will play that back and when we look in voltage modular you'll see that playing and we can see that being automated pretty straightforward stuff so for a lot of these controls, that's going to be exactly what you want to do. So you can access all these, you can set them all up, control them, no problem. However, there's one part of this which I didn't particularly like, and I'm going to show you my solution for it. So it's also possible to assign automation to buttons. So what I'm going to do firstly is link these buttons here so we get some kind of use. I'm going to link these buttons to the octave of the first oscillator. So I'm just going to performance assign these. So we see that those get assigned to those four buttons. So now when I press these buttons, these control those. So just momentarily tapping those controls those. Now it is possible to assign these to an automation channel. So I'm just going to do that. So we're going to assign that to number two. That's button one. And if I put in similar data, so I'm going to actually take that out so we don't get confused by it, but then I'm going to pick our automation channel we've just selected. And now draw that in. So that's going to go from nothing at bar one up to 100% at bar five. And again, just going to load this up. And when I play this, you'll see that at about bar three, that button gets turned on so this is pretty reminiscent of a lot of old free vst instruments you used to get where a button controller would basically respond as off to below 50 percent and on as above 50 percent which is is usable but it's not very intuitive so if you were going to be drawing in uh, automation data for that if you draw it in you could do this kind of thing and it's it's not clear to see and there's no way to tell cubase that this is a switch controller so for instance if we were automating mute so if we just put mute here cubase knows that that is a binary on off 
automation parameter and we get appropriate control for it but here this is a switch but it doesn't know that it's a switch so that i find a little bit awkward so my solution for it i'm just going to get rid of all this to make it look a bit clearer so my solution for that is instead of using automation for button controls what i've taken to doing is to use midi learn so we're going to flip back here i'm going to remove that automation so that's no longer there so we can see that's no longer automated but instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to assign it a very low midi note so this is the kind of thing you'll be familiar if you've ever used contact or anything else where you've got a library where you can change expression so a lot of orchestral libraries have this kind of thing where you can change the articulation using notes which are out of the audible range so in this case what i'm going to do is in fact, I'll show you in Cubase. So the note that I'm going to use, if I look at this in the editor, the note I'm going to play on my keyboard is going to be C0, which is below, say, unless I was doing some kind of weird sound effect, that's lower than I would want to use. So that's two octaves below the default on my little controller keyboard. So that's going to be the note for doing 32 foot range. Then I'm going to use C sharp for 16 and so on. So we're just going to have these four semitones, which are going to be my triggers. So opening up voltage modular, it's very similar to the automation, but I'm just going to do MIDI learn. It waits for a note. So at the moment it's waiting for me to play a note. And when I do play the note on the keyboard, it recognizes that and comes out of MIDI learn mode. I'm going to do the same for 16. So 16 is going to be the C sharp. So MIDI learn, C sharp. MIDI learn for that one will be D and MIDI learn for this one is going to be D sharp. And now I'm pressing the keys on my keyboard. So C sharp, D, D sharp, etc. So you can see I've got control of those now. So now I can control those anywhere I want. Now you could have done these directly. I'm just showing you that you can automate these, but in fact, we could do the same thing directly here. So any control, you can just right click MIDI learn and then press the note you want to do and away you go. So now you've got a, an intuitive way of controlling these so you could control them by pads on your keyboard or whatever but if you've got a large you know a, a, a 88 note controller keyboard it's pretty intuitive to have those bottom notes be the kind of controllers for different settings and away you go so another feature which i've found quite useful on a lot of instruments is having multiple outputs and voltage modular does exactly the same so actually we can see them here so there's a bit of a hint straight away that we've got these auxiliary outs so i'm going to load up a different preset which we can then take the audio from a different part of it and get it directly into cubase right so here we are with the pleasant vibe sound which is quite pleasant so I've picked this because it's a preset, so you'll be able to do the same kind of thing straight away and get on with it, but also because it's a useful way of approaching this because it's got audio which we can pick from before the final output. So first things first, I'm gonna rescale this so you can see the whole patch on screen all at once rather than us scrolling up and down. Now back in Cubase, I'm just gonna close that. Back in Cubase, I'm gonna turn on the outputs now with a vst instrument it's not immediately apparent always where you can turn them on it's this little output thing here which actually uses the same icon as that there so sometimes people miss that so that's one place you can do it so i'm going to turn on output two here but also you can do it from the vst instruments rack so if you hit f11 on a a sane keyboard unlike my mac which does some mac os feature you can turn it on here so that's doing exactly the same thing as that one there but it's a little more accessible there if possibly a little easy to miss so now we've got audio output 2 turned on and if we show this here and close the bottom zone we can see we've got output 1 and output 2 so now if we feed any audio to output 2 we'll get it directly in here it will also appear in the mixer so flicking back to voltage here, we're now going to feed this and I'm just going to feed it with the audio before it gets to the delay. So you could pick it from other places. So in this case, I'm going to pick it from this amplifier here because this feeds these two delays and I want the pre-delay output available in Keybase. 
So all I need to do is pick a malt and I'm going to show you another feature which is less apparent. So in the case of the main outputs, if you only plug one in, you get it voltage modular nose and puts that to left and right. So the, that's why it's got M in brackets, but that isn't the case with the aux outs here. So if we play this now, you'll see it only appears in the left channel. And if I mute the delayed output, you'll hopefully hear that if you're listening in stereo. So you do need to patch in both, but that's pretty straightforward. So again, pick another malt, and then I'm just gonna put that to two right. So now we've got the pre-delayed output, but also the one with delay. So you can pick audio from anywhere in your chain, send it out to Cubase, and then that gives you the possibility of having multiple outputs. If you've got different sounds, you can do some more mixing and processing, etc., from within Cubase. Those are, those are my main tips for using this. Obviously, the rest of it is to do with actually using Voltage Modular in itself, which is uh, a world of fun. The last area, which is a bit of a problem generally with Voltage Modular, I've found is the CPU use. So if we just look at the CPU meter, you can see that it's banging along quite happily. It has peaked out at one point during this when I loaded up a patch earlier on. And if we play some notes, in the case of this patch, it doesn't jump up much, but some of them, as soon as you start playing anything, they will use up a lot of CPU. So although this uh, machine I'm doing this recording on isn't the most powerful computer ever, it's also not completely gutless. So even on my main studio computer, I sometimes find patches will overload Cubase completely. There are two ways to deal with this. So one of these is available to all versions of Cubase, as far as I'm aware. It certainly works in Elements and uh, Artist. And that's using freeze. So I'm just going to load up a patch to, to demonstrate this and give us some notes to play with. And then we will see how this works. Right, so here we have a fairly simple patch that we saw earlier on in the video. So a couple of oscillators just feeding a mixer and an amplifier. Nothing revolutionary about that. So I'm just going to record a quick bit of MIDI. So here's our MIDI. Fairly straightforward baseline kind of thing, but we can see that even just that is using up certainly a quarter of the processing power and is going to peak occasionally, etc. So what we want to do is minimize that load. Now, let's say there are two ways to do it. So the first one is freeze. So if you click this, we get an option where we can freeze the instrument or instrument a channel. So you would typically, if you had processing on there that was using up a lot of CPU power, so if you had inserts on that channel, then you'd do that. But I haven't, I just want to freeze the instrument. So if I click OK, effectively what it's doing is doing a mix down and then disabling the VST instrument. So we can see a number of the controls get grayed out. You can't do any editing. You can see it's locked here, etc. But importantly, if you've done all your editing, etc., it plays back. And when we look at the processing power, there we go. We're down where we'd like to be with nothing particular going on. So that's available on all versions of Cubase. However, on Cubase Pro, certainly there is another option. So once we unfreeze that by clicking the snowflake and you can return back to normal and perform all your editing. Another option which is only available in Pro and Artist starts by selecting the part, shift and right click or two finger tap and you can do render in place. So render with current settings, we'll render that. And we can see now that this has been muted, but hasn't actually been disabled. So if we look, we can see voltage modular is still working, but it's not playing anything. So now we've got an audio version of that. which you can obviously treat as a sample, edit it in any way. So often I find I use uh, render in place because it gives me editing options, etc. But freeze can be really useful for just quickly reducing your CPU load without having any problems. So that's been a look at using voltage modular as an instrument from within Cubase and a few little tips and tricks you can use to make using it simpler and quicker. 
and also getting the most out of it given that it is pretty heavy as far as CPU use is concerned. So I hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon.